Thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Good. Uh, day. Thank you very much, Amir and Alon, for bringing us back to routine, to conferences and to seeing each other. I was going nuts with a Zoom, to tell the truth. The first session that I will moderate is all about uh, challenges and opportunities in the UAS world. Everybody knows how to talk about challenges, especially from the operational aspect. And I would like to start with uh, opportunities actually and relate them also both to business and technological world I think that there are a couple of revolutions that have dramatically influenced the world of the USA the UAS the UAV RPV uh, of uh, technology AI uh, those kind of revolutions that will allow us I think I'm not coordinated with alone he might tell me I'm wrong but they might even um, break down the levels, you know, the, the higher, the low and medium and uh, high levels and create something that's lower, more compact, more efficient, faster, based on these technologies and leave the high levels to deal with strategies, strategical stuff that we will not be able to talk about here today. So, talking about the high uh, levels, I would like to first invite Mr. Eyal Asenheim, the VP Marketing and Military Aircraft Group, IAI Israel. It's a very big group and uh, to talk about us, about the mail world and about challenges and opportunities in the mail market. Eyal is much more um, experienced than me in this field because he's done the operational aspect and also working in the IAF, who are our uh, uh, partners in this world. Hello, everyone. I make sure to always come to this conference, first of all, to see all my friends. I think I know about at least half of the people present here. And secondly, because you do learn new things every time you come here. And this time, for example, I've learned that the UAV industry ends at about 40 kilos. And second, that I was very happy to hear from the previous lecture and also from speakers before him that in the military world it's much much easier so apparently I don't understand exactly the military and that I've learned today. I will just give you a couple of snapshots in a very short time, talk to you about the challenges, the trends we see around us in the world, and what we do with it, how we deal with it, how we continue forward to grow and become profitable and stay profitable. Uh, look, a few trends that we've seen around us in this world. I'll start with this at the top. You can see uh, President Macron and President Biden, if you don't know them. If you don't know about it, it was um, an event in Australia. French sold to Australians uh, uh, submarines, tens of thousands of dollars, and two, three years into the project, Australians told them suddenly that they are canceling the contract, and they are now moving to American submarines with some uh, the defense uh, contract between them and the Americans. And I think this is not a warning. This is a stop sign that the Americans are presenting to the entire world. The Americans today are in Asia Pacific when it comes you know, to the Chinese threat. They're holding huge uh, um, powers and they're managing all the air detection and air defense and to think today that you can put a tier one a UAV in there, you need to have a lot of Israeli chutzpah for that, a lot of nerve. So that array, that aggressiveness of the Americans, we also find in Europe facing the Russian threat from Balkan and all, all the way to the Nord, Nordic countries up to north. So second thing I want to mention is many, many competitors now in the mail market. If in the past we've spoke about Americans, Chinese, Turkish, so during the past year or two, we also see the Italians, French, also uh, closing the gaps. We even have a Portuguese UAV that now is receiving uh, bids from England and Africa. And to the right in the picture, you can see a, uh, an armed Iranian UAV sold to Ethiopia. So Iranians as well are not only uh, mil are not only a, thre a, a military threat to us, but also business threat. And you can see a snapshot from a movie there that describing the, the uh, uh, strike in uh, att attacks from Turkey. We used to go, you know, all happy and proud, saying that we are battle proven, and that they have been used in military action uh, uh, operations in Israel. We are not the only ones today. The Americans are, are working on very high exposure. The Turkish. And we are not the only ones in this event either, neither. At the left, at the bottom, you see Modi from India. And 
you see him calling to make things in India. The demand today for localization is very strong with all the clients all through the world, and it became even stronger during COVID. Each country you know, is taking care of their own local industries and are not willing to just accept the manufacturing. They also want the knowledge. A lot of times we're talking about very intimate knowledge held by the producer um, and also a lot of involvement of uh, the senior political levels, the highest ones in different countries to push forward their industries. Poland, for example, their defense systems in Poland, they want to promote for 10 years different, three different projects for UAVs. And then one day, Erdogan will go there, shake hands with the uh, President Duda from Poland, and they will just agree that they will now, Polish will now be buying the UAVs from the Turkish. So how can we cope with that? Where can we find opportunities to keep growing and profiting? is a response to the, the demand for localization today. Everywhere we go to, we are looking for the local partner, the local industry that will go the, that mile with us. But sometimes that's not even enough. When you come with Aaron TP, you compete everywhere in the world with General Atomic, with this huge American giant with all their power and our way to stay and to have a counterweight is joining with the local giants with their political impact, uh, them knowing the end user, the local end user, and even them are a bit, they are a bit afraid with the American aggressiveness. Today we are very flexible with our business models. We are great believers of leasing and services, and a big part of our service comes from there. We offer our clients today a very big array of solutions, connection solutions. We have a client who does not want to operate the system. He only wants the data, so everything he receives from us is just the streaming of the data during the sortie, and at the end of it, a report. This is what he pays us for. The rest of it, we do. We have another client, different a number of clients with a very similar characteristics, but they don't want to share their um, uh, operational data with us. So we just operate the plane, and they take it, do their mission, perform the mission, give us back the keys at the end of the missions, and we take it from there. We lend it, and we maintain it. We have other clients who want leasing, you know, financial leasing, maybe because they don't have all the budget at the very beginning, maybe because they are not ready to make long-term decisions. So they pay us and they operate the fully the system, but we still own it. Also, in the maintenance world, we see now a change into the uh, what I call the water perforator model. They prefer to have logistics responsibility. They just pay us ahead for commitment, for our commitment, and we take resp the responsibility. We give them the parts. We know how many parts they need. We make sure to, to review and control, and they pay a bit more, but at least they don't need to take care of anything. We absolutely look to go into new directions and new fields. I'm not sure it's the most uh, f economic to do agriculture with a UAV that weighs about a ton, but we think that we can find vision uh, uh, business in other places. We can see here tweet from Frontex, which is an organization, a European uh, EU organization that has to do with uh, shore, uh, shore protection, shore police, and there you can see that they are now proud of one thing they've done with our technology. A big part of our technology comes from the after sale, from you know selling extras. We are very big believers in customer success. The client wants to succeed at the end of the day. They want to be proud of the system. A happy client becomes from a client and becomes now becomes a partner. They will now go find the budgets in order to continue and expand and upgrade the system. We deal a lot with the data, with its processing, with its distribution. There's such a male like our Aaron Heron uh, that has two different payloads uh, close to the border, and it just reports day after day and collects huge amounts of data. 
And what we deliver is a learning system that just gathers this information. And using AI, they are able to create patterns and know how the uh, targets are behaving, how they are characterized. And in real time, when you fly, they know how to uh, show us which targets are behaving differently, that they are suspicious, uh, irregular, normal, uh, abnormal behaviors. Automatically, they prioritize and they know how to do that for us, how to show us which targets are the most, the highest priority for us. They get us the picture, they show us everything ready to be sent to the operator or uh, alternately to be uh, in, understood, to be analyzed by the operator. We t Today we give our clients the ability to share information on real time through the cloud. So actually this application, this system is on the cloud and it allows the client to access the information in real time. We have one client, for example, who puts this on the public web and anyone who has access to the internet and, has the, uh, and, and is allowed to uh, access that can do it, you know, whether from military computers or from their own phone. And we have other clients who put it on their own private net, which is, uh, you know, only for them to access. We have a very big competition in the mail world. We must focus on the human resources, on the resources, and and all our management focusing. So if it's not in the core business that we do, and we, we find a different creative way to stay there. So in tactic uh, uh, small UAVs, we have uh, require, acquired from Bluebird. And th this is the way that we are still active in that field. The competition also makes us go to very big uh, R&D investments, we can't uh, finance everything by ourselves, so we're looking for partners to go into specific fields with us and put money into those, finance those. We also do many things that we can't tell you about, unfortunately. And just to end, we are swimming in the big boys' pool, and we are the fastest swimmers that we can be. And every day we just swim faster and faster and try to be more creative and faster. We were the first in mail, and we, are, we intend to stay first. Thank you very much.